I'm here at Alumni Arena on the campus of the University of Buffalo here to talk Big Four Hoops, specifically the UB Bulls, joined by Aaron Mansfield, the editor-in-chief of the Spectrum, UB student newspaper. And, you know, Aaron, it's already November. We're talking UB Bulls basketball in the midst of a phenomenal football season. You know, what's the vibe around campus? What's the expectation going into the basketball season? As you said, it's been a phenomenal football season here at UB. It's been a rarity. The football team is 6-2 and two this year. They're really in contention for that MAC title. But we're here to talk hoops today. And basketball season starts next week. We'll get our first glimpse of the team in the Bobby Hurley era. Bobby Hurley, the first-year head coach, legendary two-point guard. Danny White fired longtime coach Reggie Witherspoon after last year. The Bulls had gone 14-20 and 20 in Reggie Witherspoon's 14th year. It's a very controversial firing, and we're going to find out next week in our first glimpse at whether it was justified in bringing Bobby Hurley here. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of hype going on this team. There's a lot of seniors, a lot of talent on this team. And for those unfamiliar with Bobby Hurley, uh, as you pointed out, star point guard for Duke in the early 90s. He was on two national championship teams, played a few years in the NBA, uh, was a first-round pick. Um, he's only had a couple years of coaching experience. He spent uh, a couple years under his brother, and, and now he comes into UB as the head coach of a program with a lot of talent. You know, what do you expect to have him this year? There are obviously going to be some hiccups, as there would be with any first-year head coach. With that being said, I think it was a pretty generally agreed-upon consensus that when Reggie was the head coach, this year's team was expected to contend for that MAC title. So I see it as the same scenario for Bobby Hurley. Whether it's fair for him or not, that's what he stepped into. He stepped into a roster that was full of talent, and he's got the potential there to win a MAC title. Now, I'm not sure if they will, but they've definitely got the talent to do it. Yeah, we talked about talent, obviously headed by Javon McCray, that senior in the middle, 6'7", pushing 250, if not a little more. The guy's in there. He's built in the truck. He's down there. He can bang with anyone in the country. And, you know, he's been here now for three years. We've, we've seen him grow offensively each year and defensively. get stronger, more physical down low. But this is the year he's got to step up with it. Yeah, people could tell right away from the time Javon stepped on campus that he was a special basketball player. Like you said, he's a truck in the post. He won back freshman of the year. His first year, the past two years, he's been first team all mid American Conference. This is the year he's got to take over there. This is the year he's got to put up 20 and 10 a night and be the guy if the Bulls really want to win that match. Yeah, you know, and he's voted back because he's a player of the year, so obviously it's there. But let's talk about some guys outside of the line. Um, you got Gerard Oldham coming off an injury last year, senior point guard leader. Um, some other guys, Jared Ski, who's freshman last year, forced to step into that role for Gerard. How much does that experience that he has, not only Jared, but the whole team, how much does that help a guy like Javon takes the pressure off? Yeah, I think the point guard position is the most fascinating on the entire roster. Most notably because Bobby Hurley was a legendary point guard back in his day, but also because you've got those different scenarios. You've got Gerardo, who was probably the best point guard in the MAC two years ago, went down with a wrist injury last year, missed the vast majority of the year. Jared Ski, who was a true freshman, stepped in, did very well, was very composed. He's more of a passer than a scorer. And then one player I said to keep an eye on is freshman Shannon Evans. He's a point guard. He's kind of undersized. He's about five foot ten, but he's lightning quick. He's got that heart. He's very similar to Bobby Hurley in the way that he's small and people might not expect that much out of him, but what he lacks in size, he makes up for in heart and intensity, and I think people are going to be surprised by by the end of this year that he's going to be getting some significant minutes. Yeah, I mean, and, and the Mid-American Conference has always been a tough conference. Uh, the past few years dominated by Ohio and Akron, two teams that are in the back east uh, with, with UB. What, is, what do the Bulls, you think, have to do to get over that hump? To make it back. Over the past few years, we've seen them make it to the semis, to, you know, even to the finals, but never got that NCAA trip under Reggie. I think you know what you're going to get out of the one and the five positions. You got Javon McCray in the post, you got Gerard with them at the point, and you got Will Reading at the four when you pop out and hit some threes. And at the two as well, you got Jaron Ski who's filling in there. I think the most fascinating position, in addition to the point guard, which I already mentioned, the most pivotal position, I should say, is the three. And people are still trying to figure out who's going to start there. We've seen Corey Rayleigh Ross get some time there. We've seen transfer Josh Freelove, who led Alabama State in scoring. He's got some time there in the preseason. I think one of them really has to step up and say, hey, I'm the three, I'm the small forward who can put in some points for this team and really pick him up when Javon's not having that big scoring game because Javon and Will are the only true scorers on this roster. The point guards are all natural distributors. You need a three who can pop out and hit some threes. As we saw in Bulls Madness last week in the three-point shootout, they don't have that many pure shooters. They need more new area needs to hit some threes. And then Corey and Josh Freelov, as I mentioned, they've got to become shooters and contributors as scorers. Now, you touched upon Will Regan, a guy that last year was his first full season with the Bulls, uh, coming in as a transfer from Virginia. And I, I thought I saw a lot of growth from Will. I think he started off his first couple games and weeks on the team, you know, kind of going through the motions. 
not necessarily kind of in rhythm. He wasn't anticipating what he used to call it. But by the end of the year, we all saw, especially in, in the MAC tournament, that he, he was making some strides on the offensive end, but especially on the defensive end, really using his size at the four spot. You know, how much do how much does his game, Devon's game, kind of complement each other? Yeah, last year in the preseason, Reggie Witherspoon was warning us that you got to treat Will like a baby learning to walk again because he had gone to Virginia and ACC, hadn't gotten significant minutes, then he sat out a full year. He had to learn how to walk again and play at the Mid-American Conference rhythm. With that said, I think he really did by the end of the year. We saw against Ball State in the MAC quarterfinals. Will had over 30 points. He was on fire from downtown. Now, when he's stroking for three-point length, he's a dangerous, dangerous player. He's a very fundamental player in the post. He's going to get you his eight rebounds a game. When he's hitting from downtown, he can really explode for that 25, 30 point game. Stretches out the defense. Teams are going to have big trouble with the Bulls if Will is consistent from downtown this year. I see Shannon Evans as the main contributor of the new guys, and then Justin Moss as well. He's a transfer who had committed to Toledo and then couldn't play there because of a heart condition. Uh, played some junior college ball, and he's been guarding Javon McRae in the post. Hurley's very high on Justin Moss. He, I see him as the top big man off the bench to spell McRae and Will Reed in the post. Shannon Evans, as I said, I think is going to be electrifying. I think people at UB are going to love him because he's that little engine that could. He can get up there, man. I think he's got like a three or four foot vertical just from watching him at Bulls Madness. His nickname's Hollywood. I mean, he's a very flashy type player. But I see uh, Justin Moss and Shannon Evans as those two key contributors. Deshaun Munch, as you mentioned, very athletic player. Uh, he showed that Bulls Madness. He won the dunk contest. Phenomenal, phenomenal one and dunk. Really stopped the show. But uh, Free Love's going to start, as I said, him or Corey Ray LeBron's. They're, they're interchanging parts there, but I think by the time the season gets in swing, Josh Free Love's going to be the starter there. And then I see uh, Justin Moss and Shannon Evans off the bench as the two key contributors of you guys. It's a very different time around alumni arena, right? very different coaching staff, different roster. We're going to see how they gel, and that's going to have a lot to do with their success this year. Now, Aaron, let's kind of get down to brass tacks. What do you, you know, is this the year that you be with the Mac East? And Make that chip the NCAA, probably really is the first year. Or do they, or do they you know, make strides but not necessarily good? There's a lot of good teams in this conference. I mean, let's not, let's not downplay. There's a lot of quality players in this conference. I think UB during the regular season is going to be right around that one or two mark in the conference. I don't think they're going to win the conference tournament just because of that inexperience on the coaching staff. You've got to have a seasoned coaching staff to keep guys at ease late in the season. Now you've got the season player, Javon McRae. We haven't really seen if he can be that vocal leader on the floor. Now Hurley has told me that Gerard Oldham was the point guard can be that vocal leader on the floor. I haven't seen that from him before in the past either. So we've got to see where the leadership comes from. I don't think they have enough cohesion or enough experience right now for them to take the whole title, but I think they're going to be right in the thick of it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think this team is really talented. I'm not going to count them out of the postseason race. Because when you've got a guy like Javon McCray, you can't count them out. And that's what I've always said about UB is I think that no matter what the pieces are around him, he needs pieces to succeed, I think. And, and that's obviously shown have been able to be able to Because they haven't had that one shooter. They haven't had that outside threat, that guard that can create his own shot. Zach Phillips. They, they've had Zach Phillips. They've had his talent. <laughs> and and that, that's taken ourselves for you know, two or three years now. And I, and I, I think that this year, if a guy like Shannon Evans, if a guy like Deshaun Munch, if a guy like Jaron Ski can kind of step up and create their own shot, it's going to take so much pressure off of Javon. It's going to open up that middle. It's going to allow him to get to the rack more. And I, I could see this team making a surprise run in the tournament. But when I call them the favorites, I don't think I can do that yet. Just because you, 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 you touched about the inexperience of the coaching position. But do I count them out? Not yet. I think the really pivotal thing for how far this team will go is the outside shooting. I think they've got to have some guys who can hit some threes. If no one can hit a three on this team, they're not going to make it very far in the net. Because as you said, there's some very good teams here. Now, if a few of the guys, Orm Nuerio, Josh Freelove, Corey Rayleigh Ross, a few of them can catch fire and start knocking down from downtown. The whole region, as I mentioned, they're going to be a totally different team, but they've got to have guys who can knock it down from the yard. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be, I guess it's going to be a wait and see process. You know, the Bulls, uh, Bulls kick off their season in about a week and they travel down to Texas a and uh, not an easy first task for Bobby, really, but uh, you know, we really know he's a task for college basketball. And Aaron, I want to thank you very much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Big Four basketball. And uh, for all of Aaron's Big Four coverage this year, stop by UB and pick up a uh, copy of the Spectrum. You can also follow Aaron on Twitter. His handle's going to be right below him right now. Uh, Aaron C. Mansfield. You can follow me on Twitter at J underscore Snyder, S N Y D E R 613. Aaron, thanks again for taking the time. Thanks for having me, John.